Hello, welcome to the beta of Quadball for my sim. What am I talking about? So since the inception of my sim, I've been thinking about ways of gamifying it. I have to say, I am a huge gaming nerd. I have been collecting games and consoles for years and years, and I'm always playing something every day. That's not to say I don't have a huge backlog, because I blame all the JRPGs, they just take up so much time. But yeah, I, I'm a gamer, I love games. And thus I was always thinking about what can I do in order to make it into a game. Um, it's not that sims are bad, but I'm always thinking like there's only a certain amount of flying around you can do before you sort of think, well what else can I do? Now I'd already settled on having a multiplayer game which is essentially football with quads, or as you guys keep telling me, it's rocket ball with quads. What came first, rocket ball or football? I think it was football. But that's online in teams, and I thought about, well what if you've got uh, a player that's just starting out, perhaps the skills aren't there, or perhaps just doesn't want to do the online thing every time, what is what is there for the single player? And this is where quad ball comes in. I should also say in, in gaming, I think there is a certain amount of skills you can pick up um, if you're a, a beginning quad flying. Although the skill set's slightly different from like racing or freestyle flying, um, it does a couple of useful things. One of which is to get that muscle memory sorted out. So as you're flying, you're no longer thinking about like, what am I doing with my thumbs? How do I make it turn left? that's just happening, your thumbs is sort of automatically doing it for you. So that's always a useful skill of gaming, it basically takes your mind off what you're doing because you're concentrating, hopefully, on the game. My main inspiration behind this were games like Super Monkey Ball and Marble Madness, if any of you guys are that old. Uh, slightly different though, because in both those games you had pretty much what is essentially direct control of the ball, where in this you don't, you've got direct control of a quad, so to move the ball you're going to have to whack it with the quad. Let's talk a few technical details before we jump into it. This isn't the release of 0.53, that will come soon. This is a beta, and it's a beta that's only going to be available for Steam users at the moment. Now this isn't to say I've abandoned you GitHub users, the, the main release will be coming out on GitHub. It is just so easy for me to publish a beta on Steam, have people flick back and forth between them, and if I hit problems that need minor uh, updates, I can push those out to Steam, the Steam client will push it directly out uh, and update it, which are things that the, the whole process is missing on GitHub, so this is just a convenience factor. First off, let's talk about how you opt into the beta, and should you not want to have the beta for any reason anymore, let how to opt out of it again. Okay, well here we are on the Steam client, and here's like a bunch of games I own, and here's the Curry Kit and FPV simulator. If you look at the text over here where the mouse is, that means it's the regular version. If you right click this and go to properties and then go to betas, um, it, you'll see a bit here saying select the beta you'd like to opt into and if you say beta, which is beta testing before public release, and then close that window, you'll see it now has that little beta thing in brackets and it will go and download that beta and next time you launch it you will be playing the beta version. Other than that, it will look exactly the same. Now, should you have a problem with it? Uh, a, first report it to me. If there's a, a bug that you've discovered, I'd love to know about it so I can fix it. Um, but if you're finding like you, you, you can't use it for some reason and you need to go back to the main one, or you just don't want to do the beta anymore, do the same thing again. Right click on it, go to properties, go back to betas, and just go to none. And then it will go back and it will download the previous version and you're all good, you're back to the regular release version. So here's what the sim looks like, the, the beta version, and basically there's just this icon over, and you can see the little thumb if you hover over it, and if you click on that, you will start the game. Just before we play it and I explain a bit about it, I just wanted to say, because this is a beta, there's a few things that haven't been implemented yet. So if you go and click on this, you go straight into the game, there's no sort of menu UI, which um, is something that will be coming with the, the full version. Um, there's also some other things not there, for example, you won't be able to change your rates or anything, uh, in the game at the moment and that's because one of the other things I, I'm doing is I'm separating out your pitch and roll rate into their separate things and I'm trying to build a visualizer to do that at the moment so you can sort of see the curve so that'll be going in there so I didn't want to put something temporarily in in the meantime. The other thing is I really wanted to get some feedback to make sure I'm going in the right direction. Now, although I might think it's wonderful and, and have fun with it, I, obviously I'm a bias. I've been building this and sort of thinking about this for some time and I thought the sort of whole idea around it was quite good but I really need 
to know if uh, you guys feel like that as well or if you think there's problems in the mechanics or it's too hard or it's too easy or you don't like the way it, it works I, I really want to know good bad indifferent whatever please feedback as much as you can and, and, and let me know about it one thing to mention as well is the gravity and the power of the quad and the objects in the game are all set so you can't change that and this is to make sure everybody gets exactly the same experience and has exactly the sort of level playing field because this thing is based around how quickly can you do stuff so when you're sort of comparing yourself to somebody else um, it's no good saying I can do it in this time if you can make a quad that's five times as powerful as what the other guy was using so that is absolutely set obviously the rates you can do what you like and the rest of your quad setup is as you like and anything that's in your main quad sim at the moment is what will be carried through but there are a couple of little caveats to that I would say and I'm just looking at the main quad screen now that you probably want to go in with quite a neutral angle now I normally fly in the sim at around 30 35 degrees in the game I would start at zero degrees because there are plenty of places where you need to go really slowly and there's another place where you need to go fast but if your camera's pointing up in the air it's very hard to hover and see what you're doing because you're facing up there. The other thing is if, you, if you've if you messed around with your rates before the, the thing I would suggest you go with if you know you can fly reasonably is intermediate type. If you're going with uh, expert you might find it's a little bit too reactive for the quite tight spaces it's certainly um, if if you're beginning out beginners fine it's just uh, if you're more experienced you might want to turn a bit faster but I wouldn't go above sort of intermediate levels perhaps I will do something to separate the rates out so there's like a game rate versus your general sim rate later on okay so I'm at zero degrees and intermediate rate so I can go ahead and play the game now I'm not going to go into great detail and play through the whole thing there are 10 levels in the beta to go through I don't want to spoil it for you by showing them all to you um, it's up to you guys to sort of discover that and, and see the techniques to help you get through it. But the first couple of levels are pretty basic stuff, so we'll show them. Uh, as I said, it launched straight into the game and uh, and go on, and you get this little sort of fly through beforehand before you sort of zoom into the quad and you're ready to go. At this point, I'm not recording music for the video so you can hear me properly. I really need to make a massive shout out to Aerovision. Aerovision was the guy that did the main sim theme he also did some trailer music for me when i put it on steam um, i contacted him to, to talk about the games and i said to him is there any music you think you'd be able to compose for me i'm sort of looking for this type of thing i, I gave him a sort of speck of what i was looking for and credit to him he completely got it and he, he came up with five tracks within a week that all really work and really add to the game um, so fantastic well done Aerovision thanks so much for your input on this one and I I really love the music oh and I should say as well just because the doorbell rang and now my time's all weird that if you want to go back from the sim at any point just hit escape it'll ask you if you want to go back you can confirm and that will take you back to the main sim but okay we're in the main sim and we've got our absolutely regular controls uh, we can take off we can fly around and we can see what's going on we have got our quad and you can see the landing area for it We've got the ball, um, and we've got the goal. And the, the object is to get the quad into the goal. And you do this by whacking the quad into the ball. Like that. Now you'll see, as it bounced off that blue surround, uh, there's sort of a little wall that came up. That won't affect your quad. Wherever you see this blue surround, this is kind of a force field that will protect the ball from going over um, but not have you crash into it and after you finish the level you get this sort of little replay showing at the sort of last few seconds about what you were doing and yes the ball went um, into the goal hooray you finished the level you're on to stage two so yeah just to show you these edges again you see the blue edge there and if we go in and give the ball a good whack here you see it the force field appears the ball bounces off now you can if you keep pushing that ball against the force field it will go down also if you let the ball roll against the force field it will go over the other thing to mention is about the ball I started off using the original beach ball but I noticed that when I was hitting it of course the ball was filling the whole space of the screen I couldn't really see anything so if you see this ball it's pretty solid color now but as we get close to it you should see that it starts to become transparent and this is so it will help line up your shot if you want to go and hit it in a certain place you can still see through the ball 
when you go in ahead and hit it. Pretty easy, huh? As far as hitting the ball goes, um, it's all about hitting it right. Uh, hit it on the top, it could sort of drag you up and, and flip you over. And at this point, you've got the normal flip, uh, either the flip control or the uh, F keyboard, and you've got the reset. This is on a switch for me as well. That will put you back uh, to the pad. You can do all those things. But yeah, the, the obvious place to hit the ball is smack bang in the middle, and, and that will cause it to uh, go best. Um, hit it underneath, you might sort of ricochet off slightly and get dragged down on, onto the ground. That's not a problem. Um, it doesn't matter if, you know, you crash, no big deal, you just turn yourself over and you go again. The problem, as you'll find, is if you lose the ball. I will demonstrate on this level how you might lose a ball because it's it's quite hard to lose a ball here because obviously we've got force fields surrounding everything. So uh, an idea of where you'd lose a ball is where you didn't have that force field or unless you managed to push it through. So if we look here, we see this start point doesn't have uh, any force field against it. So if I went ahead and I, I gave that ball a little kick over there, the ball would fall down, we fail the stage and we have to try again and everything is reset. You will notice we have got this timer up the top. It's all about the time, how well you can get through the level, get the ball to the goal, that is your end of time. Should the ball fall out, it doesn't reset the time, that's your sort of price to pay for failing the level, the, the time keeps going. And should you get through all 10 levels, you've obviously got your record for each level and you've got another one which is a record for your complete playthrough. And this isn't the very fastest versions of each level you've done, this is a complete playthrough. So this is a sort of an interesting risk versus reward. You can use all sorts of techniques which are risky and perhaps get your better time, but should you lose the ball using these risky techniques, then potentially you have more time on that level and that doesn't help your overall time too much. And there's going to be levels later on where you don't have these, uh, these blue barriers to help you, or certainly less of them. And uh, so there's places where you're going to have to be very careful, and hence this is why I'm saying quite a neutral camera angle so you can treat, treat the ball gentle. But there's also places where you're going to have to give the ball a good whack to get it from one place to another. Notice as well that if you've got the right skills, you will be able to get the ball just right and lift it up for a certain amount of distance. And that can be a real key to being able to get from one end of a level to another very, very quickly. It's something I considered taking out, but then I thought the skill required to do it, again, works on that risk reward system where you're just as likely to really mess it up unless you've got the skills to do it. Essentially, that's the game. You've got 10 levels like that. They all should increase in difficulty as you go. Um, but the idea is here, they are manageable. They're supposed to be challenging, but they're supposed to be on the right end of frustration. So they shouldn't leave you frustrated. If you play them through, you will find techniques and mechanisms that are going to get you further and further. Um, and once you sort of understand how the level is done, you will be able to do it more and more reliably. So I don't want anything in there that relies on luck. Everything is skill based. Um, if you're good enough at how you fly and how you hit the ball, you will get through the level and you can get through the level very quickly. As I said, I'd love to hear what you think of it. I did throw around various ways of doing this. Uh, for example, I had the idea of sort of acting like a repelling magnet that the quad would push the ball without actually having to hit it. But after a lot of playtesting, I decided that actually hitting the ball was the, the most fun option. Just because you could hit it wrong, you could hit it right, and you could kind of almost cheat the system if you were good enough to give yourself a real advantage there. But that's just my opinion, I want to hear yours. And on that subject, I'd really love to see your own playthroughs of it. So if you're in a situation where you can capture video, perhaps give some commentary about how you're feeling as you're flying it, I'd love to see that. Um, post it down below if you do. Don't post the actual link to your video, just post something to say, I've made a video of it and I will check it out on your channel. Um, if you're doing stuff like Twitch or other stuff, just ping me a, a, an email uh, address down below because I'd, I'd really love to get some uh, real reactions from people just to see what they what they hit, what problems they hit first time, what they liked, what they didn't like, all that sort of stuff. I will give you that there is a slight difficulty spike in the last level. Level 10 is significantly more than all the other levels, but I felt like we had to have a challenge for the last one. It's It's definitely not impossible. It was when I started it. <laughs> I had to revise about eight times until I could um, 
consistently run through it without too much problem. Even even now though, I, I, I will still make several cock-ups if I'm trying to do it well before I manage to the end of it. Um, but aside from that, you should find the difficulty is, is nice and gradual as it goes up. Anyway, that's all I'm going to say. I don't want to uh, show you it all and spoil any surprises. I want you guys to play it and let me know what you think. Please do. Please go ahead and enjoy Quad Ball and uh, I'll be back sometime later with the full release, depending on what comes back from here. Uh, we have a couple of other features and bug fixes and that, and I will catch you in that video later. That's it for now. Goodbye, enjoy. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing, and if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.